what an incredible season it's been so far. We're with the first five eliminated teams to talk about their experience on The Amazing Race Canada. We all just watched Rex and Bob get eliminated. The nation wants to know what the heck went wrong. We were robbed. Ooh, good controversy. Robbed. Controversy. We'll talk more about that. Plus, Cormac and Nicole, who never gave up, will relive their heartbreaking elimination. Plus, who's had the sneakiest gameplay so far? What does Snake really taste like? And we'll relive some of those cringeworthy moments that were just so hard to watch. How's the shoulder, buddy? <laughs> but first, here's how they all got here. Season 2 of The Amazing Race Canada started with 11 teams from across the country. In Victoria, traditional afternoon tea turned tricky. What did it take to get a cup of tea around here? And a leaky ship made Shala and Nabila the first team to be eliminated. My legs are cramping. I can't even move. In Tofino, the surfing challenge made some waves. And while Rex and Bob gave up twice in a row... Do you want to take the pedal? Yeah, I'm done. It was Sean's shoulder injury that sent the East Coast team back home. We didn't lose. We just can't keep going. Next, the race went international. Ooh. Well, I'm going to some of the teams broke out sneaky tactics. They might be lying again. And enjoyed some local delicacy. Oh, my God. But getting lost in the market caused Laura and Jackie to be the third team eliminated. We've had so much fun doing this together. In Macau, Natalie and Megan briefly lost their step. We're done. We can oh, get it. Let me watch it. But played their cards right and finished on top yes. for the fourth time. Yeah. <laughs> and when everyone refused to help Suki and Jinder, Can you guys tell us? No, let's go, let's go, let's go. No, no, no. They ended up in last place, but got lucky with a non-elimination round. We are fighting for our life right now. Then in the Yukon, the race went to the dogs. Hey, my dog is going away! And a grueling challenge left Cormac and Nicole in last place in one of the most heartbreaking goodbyes so far. Oh, I'm so proud of you. In Winnipeg, the Olympic superstars shocked everyone with their less than golden shot. This is so embarrassing. But in the end, it was Rex and Bob who couldn't perform and were sent home. The most amazing experience of our lives. Incredible. Tonight, we'll hear from these five teams on After the Race. to After the Race, James Duffy with you. We are with the first five eliminated teams from Amazing Race Canada. Welcome. <laughs> we have a ton of questions for you guys tonight, and I'm sure the folks at home do as well, and we want you to participate at home. You can on Twitter. Use the hashtag after Amazing Race CDA. Let's get reacquainted with the teams. Shala and Nabila, we barely got to know you. We, we saw off the top how excited you were to be on the show, and then boom, you're eliminated in the first episode. How hard was that, and does it still hurt? I think uh, we're just really excited to have uh, had the opportunity to do it together, and certainly we would have liked to participate more, but you know, we're happy to be here with the other teams as well and watch. We'll come to terms with it. <laughs> have you guys come to terms with it, Jen and Sean? Because it's almost worse for you because you didn't even get eliminated. You had to bow out because of the injury. Yeah, initially, you know what? We thought that. We thought we didn't lose a challenge. And then I think the idea that kept circling in my mind anyway was we, we had no idea how far we could have gone. Laura and Jackie, <clears throat> engaged in Asia. It's your favorite part of the world. And then eliminated in Asia. Is it still your favorite part of the world? Absolutely. I could never turn my back on the motherland. <laughs> <laughs> incredible experiences to have in Asia, so how could we not still love it, you know? Right. Cormac and Nicole, you guys, big hits on social media. <laughs> there were a couple of trending topics on Twitter. Uh, one was hashtag never give up Nicole. That was trending nationally. But I'm more interested in this one, Cormac. What did you think of the one? Hashtag hot mum. Uh -huh. <laughs> oh, goodness. The, I've gotten that so much, and especially since the race. Wow, it's, uh, it's something. <laughs> it's a little awkward for a son, let's face it. I don't, I don't mind. <laughs> She loves it. <laughs> well, listen, uh, lots more from you guys ahead, but let's focus in on the team that we just saw get eliminated moments ago, Rex and Bob. What we don't like? have to. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, trust me, we have to. <laughs> okay, bring it on. What was it like to watch that for the first time? It was a lot of fun. I mean, we, as you can see, we were dumbfounded to think that we were out. We thought we were third, so it was... <laughs> Yeah. We saw the girls and we thought, that's it, they're always first, so we must be third. Well, it was, it was one of the weirder endings we've seen on Amazing Race, because usually when you get to the mat and you're last, most people have a pretty good idea they're in big trouble, and you, you guys are like, what? <laughs> we're, we're I not thought we third? weren't taping. I thought they were going to say, okay, turn the cameras on, you're really fourth. Like, you know, yeah. So when you look back at that episode, did you take too much time on the challenges? Because your, your pierogies, they look delightful, <laughs> but there wasn't really a sense of urgency. Yeah, when yeah. You were and making. we noticed, we felt that uh, when we got to the pierogi 
series, and uh, we were in the basement with the with the uh, the ladies showing how we stopped racing. We 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 got so comfortable. The only thing missing was slippers and a blankie. <laughs> They were so cute. They but you so could cute. have hustled a little bit there. I yeah. Mean, right? <laughs> I know. We were, we were having a chin wag. But we had also thought about doing the fast forward, and we didn't, and we got to the progies, and those old dolls were so sweet. We just, I was yeah, like, they went us trying over. to make them perfectly. And, oh. So how long have you been in Winnipeg? <laughs> I was like, okay, something's wrong here. And it's, it's the great thing about the amazing race that you go from making pierogies with grandmothers to trying to be a rock star on stage. Yeah. Oh. Now, now, Rex, this is your wheelhouse. You are a performer extraordinaire. You're up in front of a crowd. You should have nailed this. So what the heck went wrong? Um, I was sick as a dog, too. I had no voice. I hadn't slept the night before. And I got up there, and it was like doing the uh, tea service all over again, trying to remember things. And Bob is an expert lip syncer. Uh, oh. He can do anybody because uh, he's perfect. Perfect. He should have done it. But yeah, look at him. He, he, and look at that outfit. What was I wearing? <laughs> I, think I, I picked out Cher and Madonna 1984. I, I don't have Ozzy Osbourne. Yeah. And, and the glasses. What were the, the glasses? Oh my God. Why do I get the feeling your wardrobe disturbs you more than your elimination? <laughs> <laughs> Even on the night when you guys got eliminated, you were a blast to watch. So let's take a look back at Rex and Bob's journey. I'm Rex, and I'm Bob, and we're running in the Amazing Race, and we're going to win. Mother of Cheryl! Okay, so if we came into this thinking, we want to have fun, it could be a total disaster, we could go the other way. I'm starting to lose my ship for disposition. <laughs> Rex and Bob, you're team number three! <laughs> we're going surfing. <laughs> Apparently it's very difficult. Thank you, penalty. I'm taking penalty. We have to sit on the penalty bag. For six hours. Because of an injury, we're still in this game. I think we should do Kung Fu. I'm not any good at that. Oh my god, this is really stressful. It's easy to turn on the person closest to you. We're not We're turning left here. Just calm down. Rex and Bob, you're team number seven. Yes! Yeah. Out, two, three, four. Whoa! No, we sucked. Rex and Bob, you have been eliminated from the race. We got to see Canada and do some amazing stuff, so we were really happy. Yeah, very happy. You completely. Aw, I hurt you. <laughs> <laughs> doesn't always handle stress all that well. Do you feel pressure to always be the calm, rational one in the couple? Well, yeah. And what? I, I mean, I always, I, I always come through, but he has to listen. And so, and it's, and that's where there's, I know, I generally come through, like, with the, you know, the staying calm and keeping, and, uh, like, when we're ne driving, he would drive, and I would try to navigate, and the driver should listen to the navigator, but... <laughs> The navigator should know where he's going. <laughs> well, one of the, I think one of the things the Canadians really liked about you guys is that you maintain your sense of humor even through the tough times during the race, even during the elimination. But do you think maybe that you took it less seriously than the other teams and that might have cost you in the end? No, I think we took it too seriously. Mm -hmm. That was a problem. In yeah. the beginning, especially, we were so focused on running our race and trying not to, you know, we wouldn't even ask teams for help or do anything. We just thought, let's do our own thing. And I think that taking it so seriously was what was our downfall. You did come back strongly after almost being eliminated in episode two. But man, that episode. Yeah. You did something that has never been done in the history of the amazing race. <laughs> Trailblaze. And that is give up on two no, I don't like the word give up. No, challenges. No, no, no. Well, no, okay. you did. You gave up. Put it this way. <laughs> I'm going to stay she here until the up. guns go down. Okay. Uh, before we get to that, <laughs> let's have a look. You guys might want to cover your eyes uh -oh. because the video is disturbing. Oh, no. I decide I'm going to surf first. Having been a dancer, it's about balance. <laughs> We're never going to get the surfing. Do you want to take the penalty? Yeah, I can't do it. Okay, I can't do it. Roadblock. There's the chair you built. There's no way he's going to give it to me. So I take it all apart. It's a do-over. It's that. Ah! Want to take a penalty? Let's do it. Let's just go. Ah. Oh. Well, ah. Oh. You know, they call surfing the ballet of the sea. Oh. Oh, that's poetic. No, I actually made it. <laughs> So is chicken of the no, sea. I, oh, tuna. Oh. I made that up, but why did you give up so easily on the surfing challenge? Uh, I don't think we did. I think that, um, you know, 
I actually saw more tape there than you see on the show. We were in the water for a long time. I tried it. Bob tried it. I tried it. Well, and, I and we were so deep. And it seemed to me the not... other teams were doing it in three inches of water. And I got frustrated. And I just thought, you know, I don't want to play anymore. So I think that's what happened. No, I just got so I, upset. You know what it is? Is like we came. That's the honest answer. No, no, now Bob no, will give you the politically no, correct no, answer. No, no, no. No, the truth is, um, we, when we left the fish thing, we got to the beach. We were at a good 10 or 15 minutes ahead of uh, Audrey and Len. So we were in first, and our, after the first leg, which was grueling, and we did third, we were, we were happy with it, we thought, wow, we're going to win this leg. Like, we were so confident. We got down to the beach, we thought, okay, we just have to do the surfing, balance, you know, he should be able to do. Should be. Um, but still, we had a good lead. And so, uh, I think what most people just don't know, or wouldn't know, um, unless you go through the experience, you are on such... It's intense, super hyperdrive. Like everything is, you're on adrenaline and everything is so intense. And so we had this lead and then we saw it. And like Brett said, we kind of did our own thing. We didn't watch what other people were doing. We, we didn't try to change our approach. We just stuck with doing the same thing over and over and over. And we saw our lead erode, gradually, gradually. And, and it, it, I think chasing a lead versus being in the lead and defending it, um, we just lost our cool, and I, I, I got so frustrated. We both got frustrated, and, um, and so the fact that it happened to me is less interesting than, I think the real interesting conversation is, okay, so was there a lesson learned? And more importantly, you know, did, did we learn it? Did we apply it? But Nicole is sitting next to you guys. Her, her motto is never give up. So how do you feel watching those two giving up? You know, obviously I didn't raise them, but... Uh... <laughs> Can you be ours? <laughs> I will. Okay. I will be. But honestly, I, I was disappointed, I have to say, in the moment. I was very disappointed. As you were. I, but I understood. I understood the frustration. And I was sitting on the sidelines with Rex, actually, as Bob was trying to build a chair, saying, Cheer him on! Cheer him on! You have come on the Amazing Race Canada. This is not a time to quit. Cheer him on. And he's like, Oh, we're so done. I'm like, No. And I was almost in tears. No, for but these that helped guys. us. That was the first time you really were like supportive. And I was like, Yes, come on, we can do this. Listen, and I tried to work with I you guys. I saw his. And I, I know yeah. you did. I, I know. I was more rejected. You were that's rejected. Were that's before we knew how to play the game. After I finished my chair. Second leg. You were so intense that we didn't trust. We didn't know, like, yeah, we didn't trust you. Arms leg. Arms leg. There was a ton of reaction to this on Twitter, and a lot of it was really harsh. Here was yeah. one of the tweets. Uh, we're uber disappointed. Rex has always been a beast. He's danced through pain and injury. Hashtag quit. Oh, that's, oh, that's hard. Does, yeah. does, it, does it hurt you to read things like that? No. Most people live in a basement with three followers. No. <laughs> That, only, uh, that, that doesn't even begin to underscore the amount of uh, disappointment that we had in ourselves. Yeah, we were I, very disappointed. It wasn't an easy we didn't decision. just toss it off. And like we sat on the couch watching the show, going, "What is wrong with those people?" And then we're those people. I was like, "Oh my god!" <laughs> we were watching the episode. I'm throwing popcorn at the TV while I'm taking my own chair apart, yelling at me. Like, what are you doing? Uh, you were the only ones. Uh, <laughs> while all this was going on in Tofino, Sean dislocates the shoulder, and you wanted to continue with the race. So. Did it bother you that they take the six-hour penalty and end up really taking your spot on the race? You know, I, I think uh, <laughs> we, okay. didn't, we obviously didn't know. We didn't know what was happening. I mean, all we knew when we were at the hospital trying to figure out what our game plan was was that we had a small window of opportunity to maybe get back in the race. You know, she was trying to help me get up and get going, and we thought, let's get up and go back to the mat. And uh, I got up to do it, and she had to hold me. I was throwing up. It was pretty gross. Uh, we had no idea till later. I mean, the only reason it hurt after we found out was because um, we were so close. We were so close. Had we known they were, they were sitting for six hours and we're sitting in the hospital for seven hours, had we known, we, yeah. I mean, I don't know. I think we pushed hard. That, that injury was one of the real cringeworthy moments of the show. And when something like that happens on television, what we always do is we show it again. Uh. <laughs> We can keep racing. My arms locked in position. It's a trip to the hospital. I don't want to go home. We know Sean wanted to keep going. How did you feel, Jen? How did you balance the desire to keep racing with your husband's pain? It was really tough for me um, from many different aspects because I wanted to race. I wanted us to race. We prepped for this race. We're here to, to be in the amazing race. But most importantly, it's it's our health so and his health so 
I mean, how do you balance that? And I also knew that if I had shown any emotion at all, that it would devastate him because then he would blame himself. You were both familiar with the injury. I've dislocated my shoulder a bunch of times. Sean and I were comparing surgery scars the other day, <laughs> like the scene from Jaws with Quentin Hooper. <laughs> and you know that once you pop it out, you can pop it out again and again. And you'd done it before. Was this your worst fear coming into the race that this would happen again? It wasn't just our worst fear. Everybody we knew, our family and friends, the first thing they said to us when we, when we got told we were going on the race, don't hurt yourself, don't knock your shoulder, watch your knees, watch your elbow, whatever it was. So the instant it happened, all of that just literally flew through my mind and I thought, I can't believe this actually happened. In that moment, it was, it was the worst thing that could have happened. One of the few positives from all this is that you only got beat by Natalie and Megan one well, twice, but one time, if you really count the Indian. Where some of the people you're sitting beside, they got beat by the Golden Girls of Hockey again and again and again and again. And again. Yes, we know. First one, did you get? We are currently in first place. Whoa, those girls can run. How did they get to it so fast? How to catch the elusive Megan and Natalie. I know, the Olympics are over. Hey, girls, Megan and Natalie. Surprise! Surprise. Hockey players are here. Probably has a gold medal in surfing. As it turns out, I can surf a little bit. We can have our first win and the express pass. Nat and Megan, you are team number one. Woo! You are team number one. Yeah! Team number one. You are team number one. Woo! You are team number one. Yeah! Again and again, number one. <laughs> We, we all cheered for them at the Olympics, yeah. but for yeah. you guys, did it get a little nauseating watching victory after victory after victory, Laura? Absolutely not. I feel like they're Canadian heroes, and to really to see them in this light, really, they they should be winning as much as they did. They were those were really really tough legs. They really they could outrun us every single time <laughs> without a chance. So it was really trying to get in the mental game and watch where they could break down and see if we could edge them out in those little moments which starts happening having said that we watched the show together tonight and they come fifth <laughs> and you were all kind of high-fiving <laughs> So it must have gotten a little bit frustrating. It was frustrating. Absolutely. Because there's times where you were right with them, and then something happens. They get a cab first or whatnot, and then you're like, oh, not again. So when we came second in Hong Kong, and they used the express pass, that's the only reason why we didn't get first. So it's, it's annoying. I'll speak. I'll say that. <laughs> yeah. That's I how you know. Out. How do you know that's the only reason? Come on. Come on. Well, <laughs> it's, 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 a good re it's one that. reason why they did get ahead of us as far as they did. It really was. I mean, express pass is part of the game. Play, that's yeah, absolutely, yeah. So tonight they get a hockey challenge, and I'm sure all the competitors roll their eyes because they should absolutely dominate this, and it doesn't work out that way. They could not find the five hole. Now, Megan was having a lot of trouble with her injured hand, but beyond that, why do you think these guys struggled so much with this? I don't know. We heard the equipment story. We heard it was maybe sticks. I don't know. I, I think this thing, one of you guys mentioned this earlier, you can overthink this thing big time. And, and especially if it's something that you do, you start trying to apply your own skills to something that maybe doesn't rely on them, way, the, rely on them the way that you, they might normally. I think they might have overthought it, took themselves and their own skills for granted. I don't know. I wasn't there. Who are the Olympics? Were there Olympians in this show? <laughs> Nobody here got to compete in that challenge tonight. Do you think you guys could have got it in the five hole before the I Olympians? I totally got it. Oh, we could have. Yeah, yeah. 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 For sure. Yeah. yeah. Some are a little more modest about their talent. <laughs> Come on. The other moment with Natalie and Megan, they won that express pass for themselves and also for another team. Uh -huh. And they elect to give it to uh -huh. Pierre uh -huh. and Michelle. Let's go there. Yeah. Let's, Let's go, go there. there. Your reaction to that? Oh. I'm very disappointed, actually. Now, to their credit, they didn't necessarily know all the details of how Pierre and Michelle had been playing their game. Well, because the air was really thin at the front end of the bus. They, <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, disappointed because they had said to us at one point, we're willing to do anything in this race, anything it takes, and even dirty play. So we saw that. And yeah. for them to get the express pass, that was disappointing. So it would be generally, you would all be in consensus that the better idea was to give it to you. Yeah. You, you, either one. <laughs> uh, listen, all season long, you've had the chance to head online and vote for your favorite team. It's all part of Petro Canada's Fuel Your Favorite Team contest. Now, the team that receives the most votes will win gas for an entire year free. Plus, every time you vote, you are entered for a chance to win free gas for an entire year as well. So tonight we will reveal which three teams are in the top spots. You still have time to vote, so head to fuelyourfavoriteteam.ctv.ca 
right now, and you can vote. All right, coming up on the show, we'll talk about the one team that's been accused of lying to get ahead and find out if the racers think that was fair play. Plus, we've got the moments that push these racers to their limits and your exclusive first look at the rest of the season. Plus, we'll relive that heartbreaking challenge that had Cormac and Nicole eliminated. All of that when after the race returns. is we're with the five first eliminated teams on Amazing Race Canada looking at some of the biggest, best, and worst moments of the show. And we want you to play along at home. Again, the Twitter hashtag is after Amazing Race CDA. Now, there are really two distinct strategies in running the race. One is to run hard, but also be friendly and fair. The other is to do whatever it takes to win, even if that means being sneaky and a little bit deceitful. And we've seen so far clearly what the twin strategy is. Hillier Street? Uh, nope. Where the French guys go? They pointed us this way. Go, 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 go. They pointed us in the wrong direction? Down, down. This way. That way? This way? I don't know if I trust them. They might be lying again. Oh, wait, they just ran that way, dude. It's one thing to be like, ah, I can't really tell you guys where it is, but it's another thing to, like, totally deceive you. That's part of the game. Okay, stop. No! No, this one's ours. Okay. No way here, Michelle. Come on, jump in, jump in. We were in line. It's a race. It doesn't matter. We Get out. Get out. Get out. Get You did get that cab back. We yes, did. But what did you think of Pierre and Michelle's moves? You know, that was the first time we had seen them play dirty. We'd been hearing a little bit about it. Mm -hmm. And I just thought, you know what, everyone here is respecting the culture, respecting exactly what you're supposed to do to get a cab. And for them to try to cut in line the way they did, I thought, no, this is not fair play. You go stand in line like the rest of us, and I was going to do what it took to get them out of my cab. Because we were playing fair. And we had a bit of an altercation later on that day as well, but... Yep. What do the rest of you think? You know. I'll say that. Shala, what did you think watching? I think ultimately as the show progresses, your character comes out, right? And obviously everyone else on the show has been playing fair. And then you see Pierre and Michelle having a completely different strategy. And I think, you know, that will eventually hurt them in the end because no one will want to work with them. But isn't that, maybe we're too polite Canadians. Isn't that the thing? Just trying to, your trout to win the race. There are no rules they're breaking. They're, they're not sitting here, so. <laughs> it's something, right? Cormac and Nicole. Edit that. You guys played a fair game, uh, but you were also eliminated in one of the more heartbroken moments on the show. Let's take a look at your journey through the Amazing Race Canada. And I'm Cormac. And I'm Nicole. Cormac, this way. Mother, the mother. So I'm one of my mom still. So we're friends, but I'm still the boss. Pay attention. No, Pay attention. <laughs> it would be really interesting to see if I'm capable of stepping back. Don't leave no. me. Don't leave me. Wow, I can't believe she's doing that. Cormac and Nicole, yes. your team number four. That's yes. my boy. Such a good race. Who would think that they would be shooting? Cormac and Nicole, I'm sorry to tell you this, but you have been eliminated from the race. I have always felt that I've had to be the strong one on this race. He has been the strength. He's not my little boy anymore. Aww. <laughs> I'm going to cry now. Yeah. When did you realize that Cormac is not your little boy anymore? The first leg, actually. Uh, on the first leg, it was exhausting, and he oh, said, Mom, give me your bag, when we were running to the pit stop. And I was just like, Come on, you can't take my bag. He's like, Mom, give me your bag. And I was like, Whoa, I'm talking to a man. <laughs> and so I gave him my bag, and he ran to the pit stop with my bag. At that moment, I realized, Oh, he's not my little boy anymore. He is now a man. And he showed it the rest of the race. Cormac, let's pretend mom's not here for a second. Maybe you can cover your ears and, and sing lightly. What's the hardest part about competing on the show with your mom? Oh, wow. <laughs> Be honest. Well, you know what? Honestly, it was, it was great for us. Like, there wasn't really anything hard except for the fact that a lot of times she wouldn't necessarily, she'd trust me, but she has to verify. So I would tell her, okay, we got to go this way. And she's like, 
okay, but let's just let's just make sure. And like I'm like, Mom, no, really. Like when I read the clue, it said we're going to Hong Kong. She says, Oh, I better read that to be sure. And I'm like, I can read. Yeah, I'm like, I can read. It's Hong Kong. But yeah, you had that really grueling challenge at the biathlon where you ended up on the mountain bike over pretty tough terrain for more than 20 kilometers. Yeah. In fact, this took you more than six hours in the end. You knew you were in last place at some point. Why didn't you just throw in the towel and take a penalty? You know, as a parent, we always tell our kids all these things, right? And one of them being never give up. And I felt that in that moment, it was my opportunity to show it to Cormac. Not just about what I say, but what I do. And I just said, we're not giving up. We didn't come here to quit. We didn't come here to take penalties. We're going to finish what we started. Cormac, how hard was that to watch? Oh, that was probably the most painful thing I've experienced. It was it was brutal because I'm standing there and I, I have ideas of what she needs to do to fix it. And I can't tell her. I can't help her. It, standing there for those hours and hours, I it was it was painful. I think that we would all agree here that Cormac is very lucky to have you as mother. Oh, thank yeah. you. And also that the Canadian military is very lucky not to have you as a sniper. <laughs> you, you got a lot of reaction on, on Twitter. Let's hear one of the tweets. There were a ton of them. Nicole, you stayed so calm, persistent. Inside, were you screaming or are you really that calm? And that's hashtag former Winnipegger. I was screaming inside, I was crying inside, because Cormac and I have dreamed of this for 13 years. Yeah. And so I was feeling like I was letting him down, and he wasn't showing it at all, he was encouraging me, and I thought inside, I am totally letting my son down here. And I was crying inside, I was screaming at myself, I kept saying, this thing is not going to defeat me. Um, I just, I keep it inside a lot. Even tougher get eliminated and then it goes to Winnipeg, your hometown, oh, and, and everybody got Winnipeg jet sweaters, so we thought just because you got eliminated so quickly, oh. you would get everybody got We should, we should have done a challenge where you try to shoot the rifle through the no, five no, hole. No, just to uh, not put her, it all no. together. You do it. Don't let her shoot. Lauren, Jackie, sorry, no Leafs sweaters or Detroit sweaters. I know you like those two teams for you guys. Uh, you get eliminated over in Asia, the place you love so much. And really what cost you was doing that challenge where you had to go and get all the ingredients because you so badly wanted to meet Alvin, the demon chef. It looked like, in retrospect, the folks that did the Kung Fu challenge, that it was a lot faster. So was this a mistake? Absolutely. Uh, we <laughs> we, we have, in hindsight, especially watching it, knowing that you know you you choose a challenge uh, based on a few a few details, and for us, we were totally. Uh, trying to to go with things that we felt that we had more experience with and and the situation it was not it was not the right choice yeah we're not big kung fu people either though so <laughs> i was kind of like uh, might not have gone any better we've been um, exactly what Sean was talking about sometimes you just you completely um you think that you know something in this race and you and you do start overthinking things so we're thinking you know in a crazy market in hong kong well obviously you know the maple syrup is in a specialty store a bakery or something that no why would that ever be <laughs> So we, you know, we just kind of uh, probably just kind of rolled with it. You go right from that to maybe the toughest part of the race for you guys, and that was having to taste the snake, being that yeah. you're vegetarians. What was that like? Um, you know, oh, there it is. Uh, the, <laughs> yeah. The, oh, just even washing that is so oh. gross. Well, I think what Canada wants to know, but never wants to find out for themselves, what, what does it taste like exactly? The, this, the shot was was way worse. I don't know if you guys would agree than the snake. Like the shot was just it tasted like obviously mild, oh, so <laughs> mild and like sucky. I don't even know. It's like yeah. undescribable, really. But the uh, the snake, I just started chugging it. I don't even think I swallowed it. And it was kind of like a mix of, I don't know, I guess like mushroom flavor. You need a, you need a little gray poupon on the snake and yeah. it's <laughs> spectacular. <laughs> All summer yeah. long you have been voting for your favorite teams online and later tonight we will reveal the three teams in the top spot so far in Petro Canada's Fuel Your Favorite Team contest. Now again, there's still time to vote so head to fuelyourfavoriteam.ctv.ca right now and you can affect the final results. Okay, up next on After the Race, we'll find out which teams face their fears head on. We'll reveal the secret advantage that Rex had or thought he had over all of the other racers. And we'll talk to Shala and Nabila about an injury that Canada did not know about. All of that and a sneak peek at the rest of the season from John Montgomery himself coming up on After the Race.
of extreme moments on the show, and we all enjoyed watching you guys throw yourselves out of planes and off of buildings while we sat on our couches eating nachos. <laughs> Cue the screens. Accelerate to 140 kilometers down a zip line. Do you want me to jump? I start to feel so nauseous. My fastest way out of the plane was to jump. Is that a snake in my soup? Oh my god. Well, bottoms up, boy. Damn. Can't even look at it. I've never done bungee jumping before. Now, in the moment, I know you're just trying to get through the challenge and, and try to finish the leg, but now that you look back, what goes through your mind? It's just that we did them. I think I would never bungee jump. Um, he always wanted to jump out of a plane, but in the moment, you know, people are behind you, and when you're on the race, you just do. It's adrenaline. Like, you finish the day going, what did I do? The thing about this race is they tell you to go, and you go. You don't think twice about it. You just do whatever you do. I think Cormac thought twice about it a couple of times. <laughs> He said off the top you weren't too comfortable with heights, and you had to, had to do the zip lining, and then you had to do the huge bungee jump. And you know what? Some, the race is edited so quickly that you sometimes don't capture the emotion. Sometimes a good old-fashioned freeze frame is the best way to show no, 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 that's exactly how it That is not necessary. <laughs> Describe what you're feeling in that exact freeze frame. Well, in that moment, yeah, that, that's just that's not a good shot at all. <laughs> I think we have the hashtag caution falling Cormac yes. for, yeah. for that one if yeah. you want to get involved on Twitter. It was terrifying. Twitter. You know, like, I've always wanted to bungee jump, but I thought, you know, maybe something in Manitoba little, off one of our little hills. But no, like that, the highest one in the world. It was unbelievable. It, it was exhilarating. I'd totally do it again. We've got an audience question from Sydney. Okay, so my question is, if you had to race with someone in, from this group that isn't your partner, who would it be? Mm. Good question. Oh, wow. Good question. Nice. Wow. It's going to Cole. Oh, mine would be Bob. Bob? I was going to say Nicole. Bob, yeah. Shala's pointing at Rex. Rex Shala. is pointing at Shala. Shala and I are secret lovers. <laughs> oh. yeah. It's true. That's another show. It's true. Yeah, that's a completely other. Take it down. Watch out, Bob. Watch out. It's a different show, but it, it's a different show, but it would be a fascinating show. Definitely. Well, throughout the show, Rex mentioned on more than one occasion that he had a distinct advantage over the other racers because of one of his attributes. The dancer is here. I know the dancer, right? To be a principal dancer is like the star. I decide I'm going to surf first. Having been a dancer, it's about balance. Apparently <laughs> not. I think we should do kung fu. It's just more like choreography. It's more like a dance thing for me. No. But how does this... Wait. The clue says something about performance. I'll do it. I've been waiting for a dance down. One, two, three, go! We sucked. I'm Rex Harrington. I am a star of the Walk of Fame. I am an Order of Canada from my dance career. I should be able to do this. ballet dancer really help that much in these challenges? Well, considering I retired 10 years ago, I have about 30 more pounds on me. Not really. <laughs> <laughs> and I was hauling this one around. Oh, my God. Well, so true, because on the dance challenge. She's like, the dancer shows up. This one has to go backwards as the girl. I should have done that, because I would at least gone that. Shove over, Karen Kane. There's a new deep in town. <laughs> when we're doing the dance challenge, I only know to dance as the male, so going this way, and because he's the best partner in the world, I had to go this way. I had a bruise on my shoulder, because... <laughs> He goes like, ah, ah, through that whole dance routine. But Rex came in and he got it down pat, like, what, after watching it maybe twice. Yeah. He got it down pat. What I really want to know is, does he use the I'm a dancer line at home very often? <laughs> Constantly. <laughs> We just hope you can still dance after that whole frozen leg incident wow. in, in that one particular challenge. You said earlier how disappointing it was to be eliminated in the first episode of the show. Looking back at that moment, what went wrong? Why was it so hard for you to continue? Um, I think at some point, I mean, Sean can probably relate, relate, your body gives out on you and what are you supposed to do? You know, your shoulder? I have no idea what you're talking about. You have no idea. <laughs>
<laughs> Were you guys grinding your teeth in the future episodes saying, oh, we could have done that challenge, absolutely. we could have done that challenge? Yeah, absolutely. Shaw and I like, we would have done that, you would have done that. Have you ever played hockey before? So, uh... We're... What can you do? I mean, we, we're so thankful to be here, and like we said, there are thousands of people who apply to be on the show, and so we're happy to be here, and we feel blessed, honestly. Let's look back at that moment, though, when it all, not that you really want to see it again, when no. it all came apart in the tank, and you dropped the one piece a couple of times. What was the moment you realized, I just can't do this anymore? I started losing feeling in one side of my body, and I knew at that point that I couldn't. Now, Nabila, at... Did you feel just sympathy for your teammate, or was there any point there where you felt frustration or anger? I think I felt, I certainly felt sympathy, but I also felt panic as well. The water levels are rising, Shala, I'm beginning to see her face change. She's telling me, Nabs, I can't do this anymore. So for me, it was just supporting her, and if, you know, her body is breaking down, I have to support her through that. See, I asked that question because you folks at home saw earlier in the show, just briefly, a shot of Nabila tripping as they were running to that challenge. What Canadians did not know is that it was a fairly significant injury. Nabila required eight stitches from the fall. Ew. Did it make it tougher that you pushed through that injury, but Chala could not push through the, through the injury and you had to take the penalty? I'll be honest, I didn't even feel it. I fell and we jumped right back up and we kept going and we keep talking about this adrenaline that's coursing through your veins. I didn't even feel a thing. It was only when we were going into that tank and we had to put wetsuits on that I was like, dude, mom, there's a gash in my leg. No, her skin was stuck and it came off in the inside of her tights and she didn't feel a thing. So they pull her out of the tank and the medic's looking at her. I'm like, by the way, if we get a chance, can you just take a look at my leg? Oh my God. You guys had to have one of the worst experiences in one episode that we've seen in Amazing Race. Still ahead on the show is is there an advantage for racers to form alliances while they're on the road? We'll ask our teams. Plus, John Montgomery, the host, brings us your first look as the race continues into France. And there is one team this season that nobody wants to help, no matter how many times they ask. And man, they ask a lot. We'll talk about the team that's been annoying everybody after the race continues. We're looking back at the first half of Season 2 of Amazing Race Canada and talking to the first five teams eliminated on the race. And you can participate at home. Again, the hashtag on Twitter is after Amazing Race CDA. Let's talk alliances. We didn't see a lot of that on the show. Secretly, were you guys trying to form some alliances? Yeah, you know, we actually were. The few of us who were at the front for the legs that we were there, so Rex and Bob, ourselves, Len, Audrey, the three of us were, we started to form a bit of an alliance. We wanted to someone to take down Megan Natalie, at least for one leg. Yeah. yeah. It was at the airport in Hong Kong. Um, when we came back from Hong Kong in, yeah. in Vancouver before we went up to the Yukon yeah. that we started talking about it, the three teams about strategizing when there might be a U-turn, how we would use it. Um, ultimately, it was to, to bring them down. I believe you all had an an unspoken alliance against one team, and that was Suki and Jinder. Their motto for the race so far appears to be, please show me how to do this, please, oh, yeah. please. <laughs> how did you put this part on? Did you put the head in through first? Go look at the examples. Did you just tell us? How did you do it? How did you do it? How did you do it? Why don't you just figure it out like we all did? Did you guys find it? Guys, are we working together? Are we working together? Sure, yeah, just chill out a bit. Suki and Jinder, they're just a tornado of chaos. They're definitely harsh and are mellow a little bit, I think. Let's ask them to show us. Watch the pattern on the board, trust me. What? We place it the same way every time. The what? Go, go, go. Bye. Audrey, can you tell me? I'm not going to tell you. We're not even there yet. You guys tell us. Huh? Would you guys tell us, please? Go, let's go, let's go, let's go. No, 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 no. I'm not going to help sucking gender ever. <laughs> I think they were harsh and everybody's mellow. Uh, why would you not help Suki and Jinder ever? Uh, it, it, it just the, their approach to some of the challenges, it seemed that they didn't take as uh, seriously, wouldn't focus. They, they first arrived at, in Macau at the dance. Uh, they just threw themselves into the middle of the ring and they were bouncing all over the place. They didn't show any respect to the dancers who were there all night doing their thing. Uh, even at the, the, the fan tan, they... Uh, Jinder just went. They didn't seem that they had the, the, the spirit of uh, competitiveness and competition. And Would any of you help them? No, absolutely. No. We, me, Laura yeah. and I, were, we were very close to them for the first uh, three legs, and yeah. they're incredible people. They are absolutely, very, like, uh, of course, you know, like, little things get shown on television, and they definitely do, like, totally come out and like, go a little bit intense and crazy, but um, they're, their they, limbs are so long. <laughs> how, can they, how can they help it? But it was the approach, right? It's this frantic, can you help us? Can you help us? Just show us? We are all 
frantic and, going moments, yeah. and we are, everybody goes frantic. But I think the it's race just, constant, though. The race just brings that out it in brings you. Out yeah. yeah. I feel like everyone is already overwhelmed, and then they come in and they think they over overwhelm people. So I think that's they are really good people. I just think that's what happens, and then people kind of stay away from that. And they're still in the race right now, and they're off to France yeah. because yes, next week the remaining teams cross the Atlantic Ocean and head to France. We have John Montgomery's exclusive look at the rest of the season, plus which of the teams is the fan favorite. We'll tell you who's got most of your votes so far in the Fuel Your Favorite Team contest. All of that ahead on After the Race. online and vote for your favorite team, all part of Petro Canada's Fuel Your Favorite Team contest. Now, the team that receives the most votes will win gas for an entire year. Plus, every time you vote, you're entered for a chance to win free gas for an entire year as well. So let's check out which three teams have the most votes so far. Remember, this is as it stands right now, but results are changing by the minute. Those are your top three teams in no particular order. The Golden Girls, Natalie and Megan, Mickey and Pete, and Pierre and Michelle. It's not over yet. Still time for you to cast your vote. Head to fuelyourfavoriteteam.ctv.ca. And on finale night in September, we'll announce the winning team. Get online and start voting. I know you guys are lobbying people left, right, and center yes. to yes. creep up into that top three. France. They're off to France. Are you a little bit bitter that you're not going to France? Vraiment? No. <laughs> yeah, I've always wanted to be there, so that was that's a disappointment. All right, well... Unfortunately, you're going to get to see more of that because John Montgomery is here to preview the rest of the season of Amazing Race Canada. What a race it's been so far. Go! Woo! Oh, oh my God! Of the six teams left have a grueling second half ahead of them. This is my worst nightmare. And next, teams are crossing the Atlantic Ocean and headed to France. What a France! Yeah! So far in the race, our Olympic hockey superstars, Natalie and Megan, have been nearly unstoppable. Again and again, number one. As for our other teams, they're not far behind either. Go, go, go. Which means anybody can win. Keep watching to find out who will win season two of The Amazing Race Canada. We cannot wait for that, and we will be watching. Remember, the next episode of The Amazing Race Canada comes your way next Tuesday, 9 o'clock Eastern, 8 o'clock Central Time. Thank you all so much for being here tonight. It was a pleasure to watch you guys on the show and enjoy watching the rest of the show. we got to go. Rex and Bob are making pierogies. <laughs> Started with 11 